Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael sorry, Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Got a question. Um, I just talk, spoke about uh, PropStream, so I got a question. What's the difference between PropStream and Property Shark? So I got to be honest with you, these are not similar products. Um, PropStream serves two, three main purposes now. They are a great source of national, all over the country, seller information. That's really the main reason I use them. Uh, someone calls me about a property I'm going to look up. When was it? What's new, what's the latest about it? All over the country. Number two is to get valuations. And ironically, from January of 2022 till a few days ago, they weren't getting great valuations because they stopped getting MLS, multiple listing service data, but now they're back. Um, and three is to download lists of prospects. So you can you can run lists of people that have uh, financial distress, that their properties owned for a long time, all kinds of different things, different criteria, and all those criteria are different depending on where, where you are looking. Property Shark is a very specific uh, company that mostly is New York City and its surrounding area and suburbs centric. And it really is about um, property data. So, I mean, I have, I used to use Property Shark when I used it for foreclosures. They're great for foreclosures. In my area, just to go back, I, for four years, really from 2013 to 2017, I went to every single, almost every single, um, Nassau County foreclosure auction on Tuesdays. I went every, now, there's only two places that I know of to get a list of what's possibly coming up for foreclosure. One is a thing called LI Profiles, something like that. I use them and I pay them for a while. The other one is Property Sharks. Property Shark will give you a list. I use them for a while. They are good, but but they are not the same thing. They don't really come up with valuations. They don't allow you to download websites and they don't allow you to work any place that's I think far from New York. It's mostly New York City around there. So like it'll give you FAR, what the hell does FAR stand for? Florida area ratio, zoning, sales history, lien documents, owner names. They'll even give you like specific owner names with, with phone numbers sometimes, but it's very New York City centric and it's really not as comprehensive as PropStream. Even if you're only doing it in New York City because you can't download a potential list of prospects in it. You aren't getting valuation data. You're just getting owner data and property data, which is something that you... Uh, you get mostly from PropStream too, but these are not similar products at all in my mind. Um, and that ends the 10-minute video. Just kidding. Let's talk about other things. So I'm going to do some more. A lot of people have been asking about videos and how to use PropStream. Um, so again, if you're getting PropStream, I advise you to use my link because I'm the only person I think who gives a discount on PropStream. I give you 10% back after you use it for three months. And that is uh, RE Data Now. So like RE is like real estate, redatanow.com. So PropStream to me is a very powerful tool um, because in a lot of places, it's, ha it's hard to get data easily. So let me give you an example. I do, I really buy in Nassau and Suffolk County, occasionally in New York City, but mostly Nassau and Western Suffolk. For Nassau County, I can really dig down easily. and I've done videos on it on how to get a lot of public data. So you go to using two websites, right? MyNassauProperty.com or that's the L Nassau County LRV land record value or everything and you get the section blocking a lot from there you also get a lot of information on it like the lot size the, the property sketch how many square feet it is tax data and then if you take that and go to uslandrecords.com you can then really get everything that's recorded on that section block and lot which you get from the first website and you can really see everything you can see any recent deeds you can see recent mortgages if it's if it's in foreclosure you can see when the list pendants was filed how much it was for um you could see a lot using those two websites. But when I go into Suffolk, it is a pain in the ass to get data in Suffolk. The Suffolk County Clerk's website sucks crap. And you need a 19 digit SCTN, Suffolk County tax number, 19 digits. It is a pain in the ass of the utmost performance, uh, uh, utmost. So you have to go to the town, whatever town, sometimes you gotta figure out what town you're in, right? Your town of Babylon, town of Smithtown, whatever the hell you're in, town of Huntington. Then you got to get the SCTN, the Suffolk County tax number from your town site. Then you got to go to the Suffolk County clerk site, put it in there, hope it works because it's so convoluted. And it doesn't show you the actual recorded documents. So what am I talking about? In Nassau County, when I go into U.S. land records, 
I, if there's a deed, I can see who is the new deed holder, right? So if the deed holder is, let's say, a bank, this dead deal. If the deed holder is a is an investor, it's a dead deal. But if I have a deed from 10 years ago, from John Smith to Joe Smith, then okay, this was an interfamily transfer. But in Suffolk County, in order to actually see the documents, you got to pay. And I got to be honest with you, I've tried to pay. It is so terrible, the system that they have to pay for documents, I can't even describe. So I've wanted to give them money and I wasn't able to. And they sent me a six page document on how to give them my money and I still didn't figure it out. So like Suffolk County is hard. So PropStream is a much quicker, easier, simpler, better way to get information on a property. Who owns it? Is it in foreclosure? Is it listed for sale? These are very important things, right? People call me all the time, the property's listed for sale. And I say, whoa, whoa, Nelly. If you're listed for sale, we're probably not gonna do business. Why? Because I'm an investor and I have to buy properties at a discount in order to make a profit. So we're probably not a good fit. And I've, I've had to explain to people for a half hour what that means. That means exactly what I'm saying. We're in probably the hottest market ever and we're probably gonna peak out soon. So if you're, if a property is asking X dollars for it and it hasn't sold, guess what? It's not worth X dollars, right? You really have to start thinking about properties as commodities. And that means that if a property is not, every property has a value in our area, for sure. Assuming it's a buildable lot, right? If it's not buildable, if it's 20 feet wide, maybe it doesn't have value to anybody. But assuming you can build a house on it or there is a house on it, it's got value. If a property is not selling, it's only selling for one reason. It's selling only, the only reason it's not selling is because the price is too high. Now you may say, what does that mean? Or maybe it's price right. It's just no one can get inside then there's a price for a property that no one can get inside and it's lower than what you're asking. What does that mean? Maybe it's in a bad location and only certain people want it. It's a, there's a price for properties in a shitty location and your property is priced above it. What do you mean? Maybe it's in terrible condition. Okay, there's a price for properties in terrible condition and your property is priced above it. Do you know how I know? Because it would have sold. It's really that simple. We are in a amazing times to be a real estate investor and amazing times to be alive. In that, the internet really has created tremendous efficiencies in the market. If something is available, somebody should find it. A guy called me today with a large residential property in Queens. And the property, they were asking $9 million for it. They dropped the price successively down to $6 million now. I do quick back-of-the-napkin calculations. I said, I think it's worth $6 million when it's fixed up. Right. And I think it's going to take $3 million to, to do the work. He goes, maybe it's us. I go, let's take $2 million to do the work. These are the amount of units I think you can get in there. This is what it's going to cost. It's going to cost at least $2 million to do the work, maybe $3 million to do the work. It's going to take two years. And when you're done, net operating income looked like it was three hundred grand. Take a simple five cap on that. It's a $6 million house, $6 million building. He's like, well, I think it's worth $10 million. I'm like, tell me how. I don't see how. So... The issue with this property is it's been listed for sale for two years. So I said to him, I, I gotta be straight with you. Don't bring me listed properties, right? There's a, there, there's a, for all intents and purposes, there is an unlimited amount of cash chasing multifamily deals. Unlimited. Billions, trillions, you can't put a price on it. Certainly in any of the five bars of New York City, there are dozens of guys who have a hundred times as much money as I ever dreamed I could have who will want to take a property like that, build it and keep it as a rental or build it and sell it. Hundreds. With no, with absolutely no limit on how much they could spend. If a property is listed for two years and it hasn't sold, I promise you, it's still listed way above what these guys will pay. These guys couldn't care if the, couldn't care if it's listed, but they'll find it if it's listed. So I don't take, I, I don't want listed, I, I tell this to people all the time. I go, unless there's some specifically crazy story as to why this listed property isn't selling, I don't want to see listed properties ever. Um, so it's very good to see that on either on Prop Shark, in Property Shark in New York or PropStream anywhere um, if it's listed, if there's MLS details. But there's a lot of good information on PropStream. I'm going to do. I'm going to have to do a video about it, speaking about how I use it, what are the other uses for it. It's a very very valuable tool. I feel like um, really for any of those three reasons, right? To to to, comp, to get values, it's not as good as the multiple listing service, but it's close. To get property uh, seller and data information, very good. And to pull lists if you're pulling lists from it. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in finding out more about one-on-one coaching, I uh, offer go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. 
And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help my SEO, my search engine optimization. I have to call those people. Um, a lot more people will see my videos, so thank you for all the likes. I, I really appreciate them. It goes into the stupid algorithms for Facebook or YouTube where if more people like it, they show it to more people. So please keep keep clicking the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. Very often I blank out on what to talk about. I have a bunch of things coming, so I'm excited. I can talk about this next week, but I'm only a few days into next week's. Uh, so please keep the comments coming. If it's a simple comment with a simple answer, I'll just reply right away. If it's something that I've covered before, I'll send you links to video, a video or videos on it. If it's something new or something I haven't covered in a while, I'll do a new video on it. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it.